If you ask a parent, they might call it intuitive. If you ask a musician, they might call it inspiring. To a doctor, it's groundbreaking. To a CEO, it's powerful. To a teacher, it's the future. If you ask a child, she might call it magic. And if you asked us, we'd say it's just getting started.
So let's start from the type of information systems that may exist in organizations. From the, the, I would say there are basically six of them, but quite a number of books discuss different types of them. But in a generic form, I will highlight one of these key six types of applications. Now, on the operational level, or starting at, we have what we call the transaction process systems. And these transaction process systems are kind of systems that were produced, are used at the operational level by operations personnel and or supervisors. And they come out with, they just capture transactions. So you see them as detailed reports, uh, pay slips. Space lives and um, um, different small, small receipts. Like when you go to the airport shelf and you are the point of sale, that point of sale system that you see that produces a receipt is a transaction processing system because it's what capturing information to produce output of what the transaction the transaction taking place. So transaction processing system just takes detail, very basic, very basic details and comes out of receipts. Uh, information that are just based on what the, on minute transactions that happen in the firm. Then you have also what we call knowledge level systems. Now, here are the names of the systems. These are the, at which level they work at, and these are some of the outputs. So knowledge level systems include office systems and the knowledge work systems. Now office systems, you know them, the very basic office applications that you use in the office, which you use to just type out your work and then use it as your, um, your Excels to produce other types of information. Excels, the web processing system. What else do you use? Or you don't use access. Okay. access. Okay. Then you also got knowledge work systems. The knowledge work systems are quite different from, their outputs are quite different from office systems. What they do is that they capture knowledge. They help you to document information in the office and redistribute them. So somebody may build a, a knowledge system that will be capturing best practices of what you're doing something in the firm. So in some offices, they have got knowledge repositories. What they do is that if you work on a particular project and you come back, you come and type in you know, how your experiences are and type it into the system and then that's, that information is then processed and then give it to somebody else who may be doing the same thing and a different department or a different division of the firm. So some very large firms have got very good and public, a complex knowledge work system. They capture information about processes and activities and then share it for knowledge purposes. Now, what is quite interesting is that somebody can use a very basic office system as a knowledge working system, like minutes. It captures minutes that happens in the meetings, types it out, it's in work, and then it puts it in a folder. So in some companies you have a particular with shared folders. When you go to shared folders, you see a particular folder that has maybe all the reports or all the minutes or whatever is going on in the firm. So anybody can access it. Yeah, actually we don't have a knowledge repository by making sure the information that everybody has to know is made available to that repository. Now when we do knowledge management systems and we discuss what is knowledge, how organizations and then later on in the um, I think next week, you would come to us and understand how knowledge works is going to work. But as of now, I just want to have a snapshot perspective of what they do. Then you have two types of systems that work at the support, the support managers or the uh, work at the management level. One of them is the decision support system that works on non-routine decisions. Things that are not predictable, they can show up. And so in these simulations, we will make decisions for you. For example, if a ship has to be able to estimate how much fuel it needs for a particular journey, there are a lot of the data that is the, the a voyage estimating system may need. What it may need is that it needs to know the weather pattern, it needs to know how far it, which country it is going, the type of kilometers to go, it needs to know the, um, the type of turbulence that you expect on that type of um, the pathway that it's going to use. Then you factor all this into calculation, how much weight is carrying, and then tell you how much fuel you need to do that journey. So it will simulate this different scenario if I go through much. And if, if, if you are traveling over the sea, 
there are different weather patterns. If you go and march, then you may not meet rain, but if you go with people, you may meet rain. So in all these things, you may even be the typical part you should use. So HM, an airline's, um, an airline's uh, estimate, uh, voyage estimation system, or a shift voyage estimation system, or uh, only type of transport system can be using a decision um, support system. But in offices, we go beyond just the ship. Not everybody has a ship. I and mean, you have other scenarios in the office that you need a decision support system to do. We will look at some of the scenarios later. Then you have, later, you have management information system. Now these are very busy systems that actually pick information from the transaction process system and develop reports. An example is the fact that if I go to um, um, a supermarket, like I, I always use the open shelf. When the person has done the giving me the receipts, you are gone. At the end of the day, he's supposed to do a text talk and generate a report. That report that he generates from the office on how much sales have been done in the week or even a month can be seen at that level as a management um, uh, coming out of um, as a management report or we used to be used at the management level. So any system that is going to support generation of that report can be seen as a, a management information system. Like in that place they will be doing a manual job. But in some other because I have you seen you have seen um, shops that they count every stock in the morning, then they, they count the stock again, they do the subtraction, then they delete the whole manual reports. But however, in other offices too, in other delivery lives for markets, while sales is going on, calculations are being taken on how much has been sold in the day. So at the end of the day, a summary report can just come and just tell you an overview of what are the stock levels. That is from the computer. But you know sometimes somebody can steal. So what is on the floor, we know the sales correspond to what is on the computer. But a management level system will generate summary reports to enable staff managers and window managers or supporting managers to make decisions in the office. And then the decision support system will help you to do decision analysis. Looking at different pathways that a company may take in making a particular um, in deciding a particular um, program or service. You want to simulate and say if we do this, we like want to go to we are comparing um, the sales of our product to the massive. And we want to introduce it into two places. Maybe Bantama and then this will be another place like where tech is, UST is. So you, you have a product like, let's say, this is what you want to sell. Then you simulate and put in the different variables, number of students in that community, um, potential for the students to be able to buy, and the other scenarios, number of bookshops in that area, the idea is you are trying to put in other, all these uh, simulated scenarios to be able to see what is the possible best outcome you can get. What, at what time should I do it? When I put this product here, will it sell as well as I put it in a particular community? Now, why will it sell better here than that other place? So there are certain times that you are faced with long two decisions that you need simulations to be able to make what the decision. And that's when the decisions are possible comes in. Then lastly, we have what we call an executive support system. An executive support system works at the executive level. Picks data from all the other ones below and uses to do planning and forecasting. So they will compare. Last year by this time, we saw 15% of this. This year, looking at the current market, by the, next, by the first quarter, we have done this. That's the kind of report that you hear that companies always make projections that we know we will break even by the first quarter of next year. How are they doing it? They are using decision support, sorry, uh, a security support system to make planning and, and forecasting uh, 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 decisions. And they tell you that, okay, by two years' time, we will be able to break even, or in two years' time, we will be selling at 20% more than what we are selling now. Taking into consideration A, B, and C factors, which would have been calculated at the decision support level. So these systems play different roles at different levels of the organization. Now, I can just say that, but it might not be now. We need to what, experience them. So what I'm going to do right now is for us to see one executive support system, and then also explore another um, a human resource system that works at, um, works at the management level.
As for this, everybody sees you every day. Well, I've not seen one before. Whenever you get your receipt, at any place you buy, you are seeing the transaction process system work. Yes, I did know it was called a TPS. Good. This one you are using at the office. This is a little bit, it's only a bit, I think what some fans have knowledge work system, system that capture information for storage and for using for knowledge purposes and for training purposes. But let me, let me show you the management information system and let me show you the executive support system. So what we are going to do is to look at the human resources system. What's the human resources system? A system that allows you to manage your employee data. Very, very basic. Like asking for you. When you don't have, you write the request, you go to do something, and the person comes to put it on the screen. All your time is going to go to me. The person said I didn't find it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mystery, sir. See, the, the challenge with that is how do you know where you are going to live at the same time? Because if you have 5,000 employees, can you actually have a snapshot at one point in time whether everybody can grant you leave or grant the other person leave? Otherwise, somebody can be taking you in the name of others. <laughs> anyway, so let's see uh, these three types of systems and let's see, uh, explore what differences they have. For them to state when they want to go on, and then uh, the number of uh, days available to go ahead. You have to plan the year ahead. Yeah. Yes. Normally in uh, December, about uh, mid December. Then how can you predict what you want? Yeah. 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 When okay. something changes, you can go ahead. And it's working very well. Well, as compared to this one, this one uh, right is high tech, dynamic, and uh, it's faster. So, are you sure this is efficient? So, if something like this is happening, you know, who has a different view? We, we have a similar software, not exactly the same, but then we use a combination of both. One, we plan ahead of the year because people would have to negotiate with each other to make sure that there's backup to keep the departments running. But apart from that, your leave request, approval, and everything is automated. So you just go to so the first one we do on the Excel is just to allow for backup planning, and then someone can negotiate and shift the leave days for everything. Then we do everything else. The boys, you don't go, the guys, you don't go for... Uh, no, we don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we use the system, okay. but the system isn't only to the management club. Ah. The, it's, it's a big company with over 600 people. Okay. Or 800. And uh, we don't want everybody to assist. At the, at the normal management level, they do a lot of respect. But at the normal management level, they so at different levels, which are the social level, we do the manual, manual paper request. Yeah. If at the management level, we can do online requests. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay, but what, in, um, one thing I just wanted to point out is, um, first of all, not just about what we actually just watched, it's about the fact that um, what these type of systems are and what they give to your firm. Now, I don't know whether you can see well, but here is employee search. You can search for employees by name to find the basic information about employees. So this is a kind of a self-service center, kind of an intranet, an internal network for the particular firm. Mm -hmm. Then you have benefits and payments, you check your benefits, whether your some of your payments are due. You know sometimes you, if you don't let's go to finance, how many you are even due, you never you don't even know. Yeah. And if your friend you don't have a friend in finance, that means that you can actually be waiting a whole year for something that you can be due maybe what January. So paycheck inquiry, social benefits, compensation planning, you can do it there. Career and job advice. View and change your own skills profile. You have done some courses, you want to just upgrade that now, you are better off. Because in some firms, some positions are given by the number of courses or, or certain qualifications you have. So sometimes people are putting doing more courses just to be able to make sure that the next time you know, the new internal vacancy, you may be more appropriate for it. Then we also have the work environment. 
you also get to know what technical equipment is assigned to you. What some you get to know what resources are assigned to you. In an office I've worked before, the, the ink they give to you, they put the date on it when they give you the ink, the paper they give you, you put the date on you. But so that you know that it's only for three days or it's for one or if you finish before that time, you go, you just check the date. They said everybody has not come, you have come. <laughs> they forget about, see the tough one forget about the fact that everybody's volume of work is different. And some people are in the field, they don't pay to one, they don't do anything. So they may not even pay. Or some people are more online than printing. It was the nature of their work. So, but you can't compare the cost of their marketing to bundles of uh, rivers of uh, paper. That means the same thing should happen to me. I always have accounts. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah, then you have a working time. Um, leave the rest. Uh, then working in time information. <coughs> personal information, your address info, your bank info, your family info, personal contacts, emergency contact. Then purchasing, things that you need to buy. And then travel and expenses. Create a travel request. You know, some fans, you go on missions. You go on film work. And you need to do um, a, write a, a, mission, a mission proposal, where you are going, why you are going. And then they will give you a request to finance for them to make your uh, DSP or uh, the DM available for you. So some of the firms have got very, very streamlined in, in, in platform like that. Others also have different types of platforms. I don't know whether they start, but I'm not going to do it one of the US programs for you to actually have a look at it. But all of them have got different levels of, of um, services and functions. And it always comes to support a particular function in the organization or a particular activity in the organization. For example, we saw here, one of them was working on lead requests. Now, do you see a combination of different levels of access? There is the operational level where an employee can just go in and just ask for a lead. But that same information is then notified to you, the manager, who will then go approve a lead. So approving a lead is a management level system but then getting the leave request is an official level request. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. But they are all being done by one information system, by the sub ERP. So it's sometimes, you, even though you see the diverse um, functional roles of a content out area, it's also possible that in an institution, it's also possible that in an organization, you can have a system like that. that goes across all the different functions and goes across uh, different levels of management. So on one you have vertical, different levels of management. Then you have what horizontal, different level, different functional roles in the um, organization. So we have seen this. Let's have a look at who really have a look at um, yes, yeah. I just want to check that uh, uh, I want to know the that is it, is it user authenticated? User authenticated in what sense? Like, uh, not in, in, yeah, in my login. I want to see the killer go with some app. Oh, okay. What, what happens with that is that uh, I've seen a similar one that we use in the UK. Uh, what happens is uh, there is an um, employee access level, and then there is a managerial access level, and then the administrator access level. Administrator being the IT guy who can access most of the information then manage the information for the whole thing. But for the functional roles, what your manager can do may be different from what you can do. So if you log in into yours, you, the, you know, your interface may be limited based on the job that you do. And there are many firms that have got systems like that. That even the banking platforms, even if I tell you, if you log into the system, what you see may be different from what uh, uh, maybe your senior supervisor may see. I remember there's a very funny story in the UK where when you go and work in the internal revenue service and you, are, you enter the firm for the first time, you actually have to declare almost all your relatives' names so that you don't make sure that you make sure you don't work on the taxes of your relatives. But what is interesting is that if you're a new employee, your computer screen is actually captured and mirrored on one of the screens of your MD, your, your supervisor. So your supervisor also sits down in a way, at the way this position, he can see you and what you are doing on your work station if you are sleeping. Because you can't actually, he sits in a way that is actually behind you, but above you. So he's seeing the computer and seeing what you are doing. No. Secondly, your screen too is also on his screen. 
he has about two screens here. One is your screen, and the one is his screen. So everything you are clicking can is being recorded and he's looking at it. The idea, no, you are working with taxes. You can't make a mistake and go and give somebody. You make a, you end up making sure that somebody pays less tax or you end up making some less tax. This is the level. So there is a physical, like a big brother, and then there is a, um, <laughs> there is an electronic big brother. Maybe there's a spiritual one too. Right? <laughs> but there are two big brothers. There's a physical one that he's seeing you, and then there's a um, technical one or the electronic one that he's actually viewing your computer screen. Or he's being remote to his desktop. Which is quite interesting. So this is the level of supervision that you can have in such an environment, depending on the sensitivity of the data. Some people to move in finance, they limit what you can operate on. Maybe what they'll do is that it's the same software, but you can only approve checks up to maybe 2,000 Ghana. He who has been there for 5,000 Ghana. He who has been there for 10 years, maybe um, up to 1 million Ghana cities. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. See, the only thing is that unless your check is now by your this check, about <laughs> that level, I don't know who can approve that. The president is the only one who can approve that. <laughs> if your vote is like um, our small one that we get here, then what anybody can approve it. But the president, that level of check, the president is the one who has approved it. Anyway. So let's see uh, another one here. SAP ERP. Based on the type of financial analysis we want to do. So this is what some of these systems do. And it's all the, these systems are used at different levels of the organization. So we have actually been able to appreciate that there are different types of systems and what they do. We to just recap, transaction processing systems perform and record daily operations and daily routine transactions necessary to conduct business like sales, order entry, um, payroll, shipping. Allow managers to monitor the status of operations and it's always working at the operational level. Then the management information system serves the middle management, provides reports on the current performance based on data from the TPS, the transaction process. System. But one thing is that this enables you to just answer very routine questions. Because it's just a report, it's just telling you, okay, how much did we sell today? How much did we sell yesterday? Those are very straightforward questions. But they don't do many any much any much of analysis in terms of your data. Which is different from decision support system, self and management. Support the non-routine decision making like what is the impact on production schedule if the zebra sales are done. So as, as I told you earlier, you are simulating to be able to know. So then they will use um, external information to be able to add to the current information and be able to determine. Ex examples are the way the simulating systems. And this is one of the systems that is actually trying to show the different data that the shipping information system will be. Like the ship file, the speed, the capacity of the ship, the port distance, fuel consumption cost life, the ship charter high, and then the port expense file. All of them are going to put it on an analytical model to be able to analyze and find out how much the ship may need to be able to make a journey. And when the ship can be able to make a journey, then ready. Now, what you need to understand is despite all these weight explanation systems, you can still go onto the uh, onto sea and you can be hijacked by pirates. <laughs> Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. So still, the information system cannot do that part. The only thing can tell you that, but it can tell you the risk level of using a particular route so that you can be able to increase how much you charge in terms of the risk of the value of the products you are carrying. But it cannot protect you from the pirates. However, it can also you can use satellites to be able to monitor the ship as it's growing. No, as of now, you are not the one place to be able to monitor different places, parts of the world. If you are that rich, you can tell that as the ship is going, you should be monitored throughout. That is a little bit extreme. But I'm telling you that the ship cannot, uh, the information system cannot provide you safety and security in terms of 
when the person is standing in front of you with a gun.
But my relationship with my is that you may have information on that you need to share across the different functions of the firm. Supply chain management systems to be do the same. An example is illustrated in this you have a manufacturing and production system, a finance and accounting system, and then you have a human resource system here, and all the module and sales and marketing. In the middle here, we have the enterprise system that is has the core processes, the core uh, the core data that needs to feed it all of them. So vendors interact with this, customers interact with that, and all of these the system here outputs information that's nearby manufacturing, is nearby finance, nearby human resources, nearby sales. Now this is much more of a diagrammatic perspective of this. The systems are more complex in terms of their design. But just as you saw with the John Mark example, depending on who you are and your access level, when you log in, you see different things. It is not relevant that when you log in, a system that, it, it, uh, that is not supposed to be yours, you see what is not supposed to be yours. For example, when I was in um, tech, we designed a system during uh, my um, time I was doing my teaching, uh, which was supposed to be a student management um, database system that would do um, capture, uh, do student registration, do uh, enable lectures to enter maps, do examination compilation of examination reports, and then do transcripts. However, we built a system that can use the same database, but the different interfaces give different outputs. So if you look at the transcript system, you cannot actually change the examination because you only just produce a transcript. If you look at the student registration, you can only just assess the student's details and then what courses that can be registered. If you look at the um, Lecturer entry point. The lecturer entry point should allow the lecturer's name and the courses that the lecturer teaches so that the lecturer can enter his own marks. Then, if you look at the examination model, the examination officer should be able to see the whole, the whole department, all the exams have been written, how many students have been written, and what marks have been given to them. But that examination officer, without the appropriate authority, should not be able to change what marks that the lecturers have entered. If you have a problem, you will see the lecturer, lecturer writes official notice for it to be changed. So sometimes these systems, irrespective of how good they are, they have to work with policies. Otherwise, you start having a lot of problems in the institution. They also have to follow procedures. There's a similar scenario that we had in tech that when we went to automate the old system, like moving into the new system, we needed to decide how far we go behind. For example, the old system had been working from 1985. So if you're doing a new system, how far do you want to go in terms of picking data and computerizing? Do you want to go as far as 1990? So we had to decide on that. Now, after deciding on it, we started running the data and realized that some people who are not in first class should have gotten, should have obtained what's upper. And some people who are upper should have gone a little bit higher. Because over the years, the calculations have been different. It's all been, been the, you see, there's one exam officer for the department. He has been there for the last five years. If he looks some of the information, he knew that this guy trailed. He knows what happened to a particular student. He went home, he was on, he was on a probation and came back, or he was sacked, or, or he, he was rescued. He knows more about this information. But when you come to computers, you can't capture all those information from that computer. Especially when we were using an old system based on DBs, and it was like a blue screen, like what some of the banks use. So you can't actually do much on it. So you can't even put reasons why you have flagged the student. And now we're doing a new system. So we start calculating the data based on the information there, we put it inside, and now we have this different data that's coming up. Now let me tell you how the serial the situation is. We had a, a friend, okay, a colleague who, when we, the data was run in the new system, he got second class lower. And when it was run in the whole system, he got upper. Mm -hmm. And during the uh, graduation, they used the, the old one, but the system are not, our system model was we are simulating, it had not been approved. So, no matter how much good value you are bringing, 
If it has not been approved, we cannot say that we are now moving to that system. So the old one gave him an upper. And he came for the graduation, and he, you know, the graduation never give you the original certificate. They give you this. You try to go there with your with all your best and well collected. And when you collected it, you came to sit down. Then he came back to come and collect his system. That the new system had been approved. <laughs> this is a serious thing I'm telling you. And the night had been lower. But when he was coming, he came to apply for it. Something had happened, and we are wanting to know about it. Apparently, when they came for the graduation, <coughs> no graduation people can carry a bus, carry a whole town, and bring for the graduation. So this guy carried his whole family. When they were going back, he had an accident. The mother died. Now, who are you to be upon the soil when take the thing that is second class apply and make it lower again? You have to let the person know. <laughs> You couldn't do anything about it. It was a very sensitive issue. And it's only a few people who knew about it. Okay. Now you know you know the necessary. But this is how you see there is what the software has produced and what human beings have to do to get to be able to survive. I remember that sometimes most students come to complain about their marks. And I said, do you really want me to mark this thing again? Because for all you know, I helped you just get to be you. And you are saying you should have got it again. <laughs> if I really want to mark it again, you may get to your seat. <laughs> I don't get that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but this is the realities of, um, of sometimes of information systems. You have policies that guide how systems work. But sometimes sentimental reasons and other issues that have nothing to do with the system. That didn't need to do with the policy. But because it's the empty cloud and all those issues, you have to allow it to go. But I have, this is very happened. It's not surprising. If it was you, you would have actually asked for the same benefits. Even if it was you that you were supposed to get a mistake, a mistake, you take it away like that. <laughs>